Meanwhile, an update tonight on the Bridger fire in Pinion Canyon. The fire has grown to 48,000 acres and is 85% contained. Crews are mopping up areas where the fire is contained while working to get a handle on fires in the eastern perimeter. No one's been hurt and no buildings have been lost in this place. Tonight, a new timeline of the fire itself. At the same time, a state lawmaker questions when, where, and how it started. News Channel 13's Marshall Zellinger continues to follow the Bridger fire at Pinion Canyon. We now know more information about where, when, and how the Bridger Fire began. What's behind me is a blown up map of the Bridger Fire. This is the current outline of it. I'm told that on Sunday, June 8th, a thunderstorm came through the area and it had a lot of lightning. At least two bolts, one hit here, one hit here. This is a Spring Canyon area. The lightning bolt hit a tree. Apparently it smoldered for a number of hours and it flared up sometime on the morning of Monday, June 9th. Same idea with where the Bridger fire began. A lightning bolt hit a tree. It smoldered for more than a day and a half and didn't flare up until Tuesday, June 10th. Firefighters put out the flare up at Spring Canyon just as the Bridger fire showed itself. And it's not atypical for a fire to smolder 8, 12, 18, 24, 36 hours. Deputy Garrison Commander Thomas Warren tells News Channel 13 lightning hit a tree on top of a canyon and he's seen satellite data to confirm the lightning. We have a stack of news clippings that give different times, different dates and different reasons. We want to know the answers. State Representative Wes McKinley isn't convinced lightning caused the fire in his district. Residents told him it could be a controlled burn out of control. There was no military training ongoing. There was no prescribed fire activity going on. At Pinion Canyon, Marshall Zellinger, News Channel 13. The exact burn scar is 48,300 acres. Fire crews themselves burned 15,000 of those acres to build a containment line. Still no estimate for when the fire will be fully contained. Cause of the fire isn't the only debate at the state capitol. Representative West McKinley says he has proof there's uranium contamination in the soil at Pinion Canyon. With the Army's permission, he took samples of soil in May of 2007. The Department of the Army at Fort Carson has never, ever, utilized any munitions in any of our weapon systems that has depleted uranium or any other hazardous constituent as part of that weapon system. According to Fort Carson, depleted uranium can be found in 120 millimeter weapons. The largest weapon fired on Pinion Canyon is one-tenth that size. To local firefighting districts to come in and put that fire out. Fort Carson says that's not true, but the Army may have another problem brewing under their feet. Longtime opponent of the expansion of Pinion Canyon, Representative McKinley says he had the soil tested for uranium a year ago when he toured the training site. They were consistently way higher the background. Background, they tell me, should be around one part. You know, five parts high, but to have it from 40 to 60. He says he's worried the fire this past week put pollutants into the air, but Fort Carson officials say they don't know if that's possible since they haven't seen the lab results. The fact that they continually talk about, look what good stewards of the land we are, and this happens. Controversy has long surrounded Pinion Canyon since a proposed expansion would triple the training site size. McKinley says this fire is just an example that the Army can't take care of the land they already have. Tomorrow morning, Fort Carson is holding a news conference. We don't know yet if officials will further address McKinley's reported uranium findings. They will likely wrap up the ongoing fight on the fire on Pinion Canyon. Don.